Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. This is Merlin, who was shot to death by a neighbor nearly two weeks ago. And all I seen was blood in my driveway all the way up past my house. The question tonight is why? And will there be charges? Celebrating safely with coronavirus cases ticking up in Michigan, we check in on some of the places that are typically busy this time of year. But we begin with the hot holiday weekend. If you have plans to barbecue or be on the water, brace yourself for the heat wave because it's going to be hot. The grill might actually cool you down because the temperatures <laughs> are going to be in the 90s and feel like 100. That's right. Let's get right over to Andrew. He's in for Ben tonight with your 4th of July forecast. Andrew. Kimberly and Jason, good evening. You're exactly right. The heat wave 2020 is already here. We had high temperatures for the second day in a row, 90 or better. Today's high, 94 well above our average high of 83 degrees. So today's high temperature, 11 degrees higher than that. Still short of the record of 100 set back in 1911, short by six degrees. But tell you what, during the weekend, we'll come close to possibly tying one of those records before it's over. First, it is still warm out there. Muggy as well, with temperatures still in the 80s at this late hour. Just after 11 o'clock, it's 82 over at Metro Airport, 83 for our neighbors in Flint, 80 degrees in Ann Arbor, upper 70s elsewhere. The only cool spot right at room temperature, still warm though, over in Port Huron at 72. Out there right now, it's 82. Feels a little bit warmer than that when you factor in the dew point and the humidity. It feels like 83 when you step outside or if you're trying to sleep. In fact, it remains warm and muggy overnight, not the most comfortable night. So try to turn on the ceiling fan or certainly turn on the air conditioning. You will need it to stay cool and comfortable for tonight. Now, how high do temperatures go tomorrow? Well into the 90s once again. We'll talk about how we'll get close to a record coming up. All right, Andrew. With a holiday weekend upon us now, there are more concerning coronavirus numbers out today from the state. There were 460 new confirmed cases and three more deaths reported. That's a drop from yesterday, but still one of the highest numbers we've seen in weeks. This 4th of July will be very different than in years past. Fireworks shows are canceled across Metro Detroit. Many bars are closed and there are limits on how many people can visit a lot of pools and parks. Our Larry Spruill is in St. Clair Shores tonight with a look at how businesses plan to keep people safe. Larry. Yeah, Jason and Kimberly, tomorrow is supposed to be a very big holiday for bars and restaurants here in St. Clair Shores. And while some restaurants may have to adjust and modify their crowd intake, other restaurants say they're just not going to deal with it at all. Normally on Friday nights, people pack mics on the water here in St. Clair Shores for the food, drinks, and great view. Everything is, happens with the water, on the water. Robert Tondro, a manager here at Mike's on the Water, tells me you add the food and you have a great night. Well, right now, because of the COVID, our number one seller would be either the Mahi Reuben or the, uh, the Perch Dinner. But that's not the only thing different because of COVID. Robert says one of their biggest holidays, the 4th of July, won't be the same either. Our regulars, they like to come out, watch the fireworks off of our uh, different areas. And uh, this year they won't be able to do that. It's going to be more uncomfortable because the social distancing, we have half the amount of people that are allowed in. Well, it just won't be the same because, you know, we won't have that little wonderful atmosphere. The same goes for the Blue Goose Inn just down the street. Things will be a first for them. Well, we decided that we were going to close for the 4th, and normally the only day that we close is Christmas. Cheryl Mains with the Blue Goose Inn says they already know the crowds will be fewer than years past. You know, I think this year it's going to be a little slower. A lot of people are staying home. Now, as far as We do apologize. Please. Well, we do apologize. It looks like we're having a little bit of trouble with uh, Larry Spruill's shot, but we do appreciate that report. Uh, take a look at this uh, picture here. Cities up north are bracing for some of the biggest crowds in years. For the second day in a row, this is what the Mackinac Bridge looked like. Bumper to bumper traffic there. The Mackinac Bridge Authority says 5,000 cars crossed in just one hour today. And the Cherry Capital Airport in Traverse City says two positive cases were linked to flights there. They both involve flights on Wednesday, one leaving the airport headed to Phoenix, the other coming into Traverse City from St. Petersburg, Florida. 
Tonight, the Macomb County prosecutor is weighing whether to charge an East Point man with killing his neighbor's dog. Neighbors say he fired multiple rounds on Marine near Nine Mile and Kelly two weeks ago. And as Mara McDonald reports, they're now calling for justice for the pit bull named Merlin. Jace, what witnesses say is that what happened to this dog was completely unnecessary and reckless. And I'm like, what happened? Who shot my dog? I'm like, why? Paulette was at work when Merlin was shot in her own driveway, but she rushed home when the calls started coming in. He was in my driveway. I kept on saying, well, he was in my driveway. I don't understand why he was shot five to six times. According to neighbors, Merlin and Paulette's other dog, Taz, snuck out through the front door. Merlin was hanging around the yard. Taz was down the street. Her neighbor, Mike, called to both dogs to try and get them in the fenced backyard. I believe it was very unnecessary. There was no reason for any shot to be fired. Mike says while he was trying to corral the dogs, the neighbor on the other side of Paulette's house and his girlfriend came out. The girlfriend was on Paulette's driveway when she saw Merlin, shrieked, and jumped on top of the hood of a nearby car. That's when Mike says the bullets started flying. And all I heard was a gun going off next to my head and watching a dog get shot for, to me, which was no reason. Shot at least five times, Merlin dragged himself to the backyard and died. Paulette is so upset. She wants the neighbor who fired those shots charged. He should have been charged. He should have been arrested that night because, for shooting a gun, for shooting a gun in a residential area. I don't understand. East Point PD has been out in the neighborhood multiple times trying to get down to the bottom of what happened here right now. Their case file has been turned over to the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office for a charging decision. We're in East Point. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara. The couple caught on video pulling a gun on a black family is out on bond. Julian and Eric Wustenberg are facing felony assault charges. Investigators say the confrontation between the couple and a black mother and her daughter started when the groups bumped into one another at a Chipotle in Orion Township. Things escalated and the video has gotten national attention. Eric Wustenberg was fired from his job at Oakland University and he lost his position on Congresswoman Elissa Slotkin's advisory committee. A guy like Eric has now been taken down because someone uttered three words, you're a racist. How fair is that? Where is the due process in this? I think the country as a whole is, is, is tired of seeing situations where you have unarmed uh, blacks having firearms pointed at them. The couple will be back in court later this month. Dozen showed up for a rally in support of police in Bloomfield Township tonight. It was called Operation Back the Blue, and it was put on by the Michigan Conservative Coalition. People in attendance say they want to highlight the good work being done by police at a time when departments receive a lot of negative attention. Today, more than 20 faith leaders renewed the call to commute the sentence of former Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick. The coalition was brought together by Ebony Magazine. The group, including Kilpatrick's former pastors in Detroit and Dallas, made the plea to President Trump. They say his 28-year prison sentence does not fit the crime and shows how the justice system is disproportionately unfair to black men. If this was about rehabilitation, then Kwame is well overdue. Therefore, we ask the president for justice. But when justice takes on the character of revenge, something has to be said. The exorbitant sentence that has been placed on Kwame Kilpatrick needs to be re-examined. In May, the Justice Department denied a request for Kilpatrick to be released on home confinement because of the coronavirus. Quarantine was tough for a lot of people, not allowed to visit with family. But imagine being stuck thousands of miles away from your family for nearly four months. Today, Delta Airlines came to the rescue of Americans stranded on another continent. And why four police officers are now out of a job because of this photo. And President Trump is celebrating the 4th of July at Mount Rushmore as we speak. And it's a visit that's stirring up some controversy.